Welcome to the world of ZIP System Building Enclosures, where we believe in striving for optimal air, water, and thermal management, no matter the region or climate. Because when you have the right products to do the right job the right way, the first time, you're building to a higher code. I'm Jake Bruton, and today on the Build Show Network, we're going to talk about uh, siding, but we're not going to talk about siding. We're going to talk about what happens leading up to siding. This will probably be some sort of like one of three on siding for this house. Let's start now. Okay, we are on one of Aero Buildings projects outside Columbia, Missouri. We operate in the Columbia, Missouri market and the Kansas City market both. Today we happen to be outside of Columbia and this is our Aero Redo house. If you remember from a few months ago, we had a foundation next to another house. That house that's only like eight years old is going to go away at some point because it was so poorly built, because the clients got ripped off, because there's no building inspections in this part of the country. They didn't know any better. The builder didn't know any better. They made mistakes. This is the house that we're rebuilding. This is a project that we're doing with Stephen Basic. So if you watch Steve's videos on the Build Show Network, you've probably seen some of the details for this house. But today, I want to talk to you about our siding. So let's start by talking about siding like in theory, if you will. Uh, we could call it cladding, we could call it siding. Cladding probably a, a applies to like if we had brick or stone or stucco or, or what we think of as siding. Uh, so let's call it cladding. So pre-cladding, we have to understand what our control layers are, what things are doing in our assembly and why they matter or don't matter. So let's start with uh, the zip R sheathing in this case. The R value has nothing to do with our actual siding install or cladding install. So we're gonna skip the fact that this has continuous insulation on it. Just know that it's back there and it's not necessarily pertinent to this part of our WRB conversation, the weather resistant barrier conversation. So when we look at our, our buildings, we're talking about those four control layers, water, air, thermal, thermal and vapor, and vapor, sorry. Um, water is our number one killer of buildings. We're on the outside of the building, our number one focus is water. So when we use the zip system sheathing, we have a weather tight barrier once we take our panel and our tape that's been properly applied together. So if I look at, say, this section of the wall that has literally no fasteners in that section that I just drew my fingers around, I have no concerns whatsoever if I'll ever have water penetration at that point. Now, when the cladding goes on, there may be a fastener there that at some point during the future, if I had water held in tension, might cause a problem. But right now, there's nothing there. In fact, literally today, right now, there are four guys inside hanging rock and one of our trim carpenters taking care of a few small, uh, cantankerous little details right ahead of the drywallers. They're installing finishes inside the building and we don't have a cladding on. Well, why is that possible? Because this, is the same as this section once the tape is over it, is the same as this section with the nails over top of it. We're not worried about our nail head penetrations. We made a video a couple years ago about blower door testing from the inside and drawing on that and trying to get it to leak and we couldn't. We're not worried about the tape. We've had a long track record with their system and their tape. So what is our, what is our area of worry? If this is not our area of worry, where should we worry? Well, the first place we're going to worry is the bigger the opening, the bigger the problem. So we have a 16 foot wide patio door on the front of the building. We have uh, a lot of uh, windows on the building. Now, they're all like with an asterisk next to them because this window is a foot and a half to the overhang and the overhang is 16 inches. Or on the front of the house, it's two feet, but the overhang is two feet. So the head of the window is the place that sees the most water. It's the part that we're most worried about. We're protecting that with our overhangs. Yeah, you could build a house without overhangs, but you would have to be very certain that you weren't gonna have any water intrusion. And so all of your systems would have to be incredibly well thought out and detailed. Here, they are thought out and they are detailed, uh, but we actually kind of almost have the ability to be slightly laissez-faire with it, because as you can see on the back of the house in a second, uh, the overhang is, it's 12 inches and it's a two foot overhang. The top of the window is never even gonna get wet. So then next, we're worried about the next horizontal plane that could catch water. It's the bottom sill of the window. Well, the sill of the window is completely waterproofed with, in this case, uh, zip stretch tape, a 12 inch wide stretch tape, and then tape into the opening. So 
our windows become not the issue that we're worried about very quickly from a high quality installation. We are uh, not face sealing them. We're actually doing our water control membrane on the inside face of this, so or our air control. So on the outside, all you see is the ability to shed water just in the shingle effect. The gray tape that you can see is a Sega Fintrum. It's vapor open. It sticks to the windows a little bit better. Uh, we like it in this instance, but if we had flange windows here, you would only really see the zip product. That would be the only products that we'd be using. So check out our videos on window installs. But what we really want to talk about today is the walking inspection and the, uh, the ability to handle all of our penetrations. The siding crew is not here. The install guys are not here, but we have a mounting point for a hose bib. We have mounting point for our, uh, all of our, all three of our mini split uh, hose line sets. We have power coming out for our mini splits. We have a, a box. There's a lot going on here that if we just let our plumber screw this tight to the house, it doesn't take into account our rain screen, the gap between the mounting block and the rain screen or the mounting block and potentially the elevation. So we want this thing to have a little bit of a slope. If it's already screwed in, it may or may not have that. We have the ability to make some small adjustments here. So what you're seeing is pre-planning the distance that this needs to stick out and then we're liquid flashing with uh, Huber's liquid flash or pre-planning the the layout for these guys for the line sets and we're liquid flashing around every single one of those so now we have air and water seal at the face of this this system or at where the wire comes out of the wall this is something that we do with our in-house carpentry team we do not ask uh, our siding install crews or our cladding crews to handle this and the reason we don't ask them to handle this is because we have very specific size that we need on rain screen with the sealant behind it. If this were just a specific size with the rain screen behind it, it would be a cladding detail. But as soon as I'm managing air and water back in behind there, now it is a, an envelope detail that is a much, uh, much larger risk to me and my company. So now we have our in-house carpentry guys. They know what to do here. They know what things we want. We want these things to look like. They know that up above here, there's some penetrations that don't need anything because they're just gonna be a, a round pipe with a range hood or, or a hood cover at some point or a plumbing vent that's just gonna turn up at some point after this cladding's on. We do all of this so that the siding guys can just show up and nail siding on the wall. I know it sounds overly simple when I say it like that, but I don't want our siding crew to be taking care of this sort of detail. Uh, outside of the liquid flash components here and the window taping. The other thing that's of note in this instance is we have Sega Fintrum all the way around our sill plate. At this house, we actually waited to put that Sega on until after the windows were installed. The reason we're using Sega Fintrum to bridge from our zip system sheathing down to the concrete as an air barrier and a water control layer, it's vapor open and it actually sticks to concrete. Even zip tape that's really a high quality, amazing tape, it's not engineered to stick to concrete, so it doesn't stick that well to concrete. The Sega has a very thick adhesive body in it, and it does a really good job of sticking to clean concrete. Obviously, we have to sweep it off and dust it off. Sometimes you have to wash it off if it's really dirty, but to clean concrete without any sort of primer. The reason we waited till after the windows were in, we were getting water inside, and we wanted it to be able to dry out. We don't want to create a bathtub that if water then gets inside, it can't go anywhere. So we leave that detail till a little later in the process. It does mean that that concrete cleaning process is a little more intensive because it's had an opportunity to get dirty. But order of operations, I would rather have the ability to like sweep the water out or at least sweep it up against the sill plate and then have it drain out underneath the sill plate because we have no uh, sill detail other than this uh, tape. You've seen some videos on here, but by myself, by Steve Basic, by maybe even Travis uh, Brungart, where we're doing multiple beads of sealant underneath the plate. This is our current iteration. I think we're gonna stick with this for a while. We're really happy with the way this works. I think it's actually a little more cost effective even though it involves a special order tape. So, this siding video ends up being about water and air. Those are the things that we're most worried about killing our building. From the thermal and vapor standpoint, 
we know the vapor profile of the wall because we know the materials that are in it and we know what the requirements are in our climate zone four, so we're not worried about that. From the thermal perspective, we do have uh, R9, uh, Zip R9 here, with a filled two by six uh, cellulose uh, blown in place cavity on the inside. We're well above what code requires. We're closing in on that R40 that uh, Building Science Corporation recommends for a, a wall in climate zone five even that's trying for net zero. Uh, so we have a really strong assembly from those points. We also have a really strong assembly for water and air. We've, we've managed to inspect everything out here. We know that our batten strips, you can see the pile back behind me, for our rain screener here. We know there's more tape here. There's no more liquid flash. You can't see it, but there's a box of liquid flash on the job site. Our job now is to go around and make sure that everything is absolutely ready. Everything's been perfectly nailed. Any overdriven fasteners are covered, all those sorts of things, and get on the path to being able to go put siding on the wall. This is the point where mistakes are made. If we miss something now and we don't fix it, it's covered up and we'll never know, or it's not, it's covered up and we'll never know that it was actually water sealed and we'll get water back in there and have a problem. Like this is the point where same way we have that pre drywall checklist. This is our pre siding checklist. We're going through the list of items, making, making sure everything's been nailed. Everything's been poked through. If it exists on that side, does it exist on this side? If it exists on this side, has it been taped or sealed? How is it going to work once we put the siding on? All those things. We're taking a moment. I know it sounds crazy, but we're taking a moment and we're walking the property and we're staring at the building and going, hmm, what did we screw up here? What's going to happen if that gets wet? How's that going to leak air? What problem is this going to cause us down the line? I think that mentality of, um, as Farley uh, says, work slower to be faster. This is an excellent opportunity to take that opportunity and try to figure out what you need to fix before you move forward. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we'll probably have one or two more on the siding install of this house. It's got some unique details. It's got some unique patterns. It's a really nice, well-considered building that's just this cool little house that has cool siding. So I can't wait to share that with you over the next couple months when this gets covered up. Till then, thank you for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe to the Unbuild It podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to... Uh, don't forget to follow me, I should say, on Instagram. It's jake.bruton on Instagram. Uh, and uh, have a good day. Stay tuned.